Do you believe in the power of fate, or perhaps the hidden forces that can shape a person's life? Let's delve into the enigmatic life of Maura Murray, born on May 4, 1982. She was brought up in Hanson, Massachusetts, as the fourth child of Frederick Fred and Lori Murray, with an older brother named Fred, two older sisters named Kathleen and Julie, and a younger half-brother named Kurt. Maura was raised in the nurturing environment of an Irish Catholic household. However, her parents went through a divorce when she was just six years old. Maura's journey was never ordinary, but what if I told you that her seemingly normal life held secrets that would eventually lead to one of the most puzzling mysteries in recent memory? Please take a moment to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for fascinating stories like these. Maura's early years were distinguished by her success both academically and athletically. She graduated from Whitman Hanson Regional High School as a star athlete on the track team, reflecting her dedication and determination. However, her academic journey took an unexpected turn when she switched from pursuing a degree in chemical engineering at the United States Military Academy in West Point, New York, to enrolling in the University of Massachusetts Amherst for a nursing degree. Before her mysterious disappearance, Mora was involved in a significant incident related to a stolen credit card. In November 2003, just three months before she vanished, she acknowledged using a stolen credit card to order food from various restaurants. The charge was expected to be dismissed after three months of good behavior. This incident hinted at hidden complexities in her life that weren't readily apparent. On the evening of February 5th, 2004, during her campus security job, Mora had an emotional phone conversation with her older sister, Kathleen, revealing family emotional struggles. Later that night, while still on her shift, Mora broke down in tears, displaying profound emotional distress. Her supervisor, deeply concerned, escorted her back to her dorm room around 1.20 a.m. for support and comfort. The details of this phone call remained a mystery until October 2017, when Kathleen disclosed its contents. Kathleen, a recovering alcoholic, had been discharged from a rehabilitation clinic on the same evening, leading to an emotional breakdown on her way home from a liquor store. This revelation shed light on the emotional complexities within Mara's family and the circumstances leading up to her disappearance. Subsequent events leading up to Mora's disappearance deepened the mystery. On February 7, 2004, her father, Fred, arrived in Amherst, marking a significant moment. Mora and her father went car shopping and had dinner with one of Mora's friends. However, the day took an unexpected turn when Mora, using her father's Toyota Corolla, was involved in a significant car accident in Hadley, Massachusetts, resulting in nearly $10,000 worth of repair costs. Law enforcement officers arrived at the accident scene and documented it in an official report. Notably, there was no record of field sobriety tests being conducted, leaving certain ambiguities regarding the circumstances surrounding the crash. Following the accident, Mora was driven to her father's motel, where she spent the morning coping with the aftermath. One noteworthy detail is a 4.49 a.m. cell phone call placed to her boyfriend from Fred's phone, the details of which remained shrouded in ambiguity, adding complexity to the narrative. The morning of Monday, February 9, 2004, brought further intrigue to the enigma. At 1 p.m. that day, Mora emailed her boyfriend, expressing her affection and promising to call later, despite her reluctance to engage in extensive conversation. In addition to this communication, she made a three-minute phone call inquiring about renting a condominium at a familiar Bartlett, New Hampshire, condo association, suggesting a potential intention to seek refuge in an unfamiliar location. Later that afternoon, at 1.24 p.m., Mara emailed a work supervisor within the nursing school faculty, notifying them of her anticipated week-long absence due to a purported family death. This claim raised questions about its veracity since her family had no record of any recent deaths. This deliberate act of misrepresentation suggested a level of secrecy and intent, further fueling speculation about her motivations. In the hours leading up to her disappearance, Mora made notable purchases and preparations, adding complexity to the sequence of events. At 3.40 p.m., she withdrew $280 from an ATM, underscoring the importance of her access to resources. She then visited a nearby liquor store, purchasing a variety of alcoholic beverages including Bailey's Irish Cream, Kahlua, 
vodka, and a box of Franzia wine. Security footage confirmed her solitary presence during these transactions, leaving little room for speculation regarding the context of her activities. Additionally, Mora obtained accident report forms from the Massachusetts Registry of Motor Vehicles, a practical step taken to manage the consequences of the car accident in Hadley. Her conscientious approach to addressing the aftermath highlighted her commitment to managing her responsibilities, despite the evident emotional strain that had been building in the preceding days. With her car packed with essential belongings, including clothing, toiletries, college textbooks, and birth control pills, Mora embarked on a journey that would ultimately lead to her disappearance. A subsequent search of her dorm room revealed packed boxes and bare walls, indicating a deliberate effort to prepare for an imminent departure. At the top of the boxes lay a printed email addressed to her boyfriend, hinting at potential relationship troubles that added an additional layer of complexity to the circumstances leading up to her disappearance. At around 3.30 p.m. that day, Mora left her campus, unknowingly setting off a series of events that would lead to her baffling disappearance. Coincidentally, her departure coincided with the media frenzy surrounding the disappearance of Brianna Maitland, a 17-year-old from Vermont, drawing considerable attention to Mora's case. Shortly after 7 p.m., a resident in Woodsville, New Hampshire, heard a loud thud and saw a car lodged against a snowbank on Route 112. To add to the intrigue, the car faced the wrong way, westbound on the eastbound side of the road. She immediately called the Grafton County Sheriff's Department at 7.27 p.m. According to her initial statement, she saw a man smoking in the car. However, she later revised this to describe a red light, possibly from a cell phone. A school bus driver passing by, a local resident, noticed a young woman near the car. Although she displayed no visible injuries, she was shivering in the cold. He offered to call for help, but she pleaded with him not to involve the police, saying she'd called 911. Despite the lack of cellular reception, he called the police at 7.43 p.m., though he couldn't spot Mora's car during the call. Another resident, returning home from work at around 7.37 p.m., saw a police SUV parked facing Mora's car. She didn't see anyone inside or around the vehicles and continued on her way, contradicting the police log which noted the Haverhill police arriving nine minutes after she had passed. As per the official police log, a Haverhill police officer arrived at 7.46 p.m., only to find Mora missing without a trace. Her car was severely damaged with a shattered left headlight, a radiator pushed into the fan, a cracked driver's side windshield, and deployed airbags. Strangely, the car was locked. Inside the car, red stains resembling wine were found. Other items included an empty beer bottle, a damaged box of Franzia wine, blank accident report forms, gloves, compact discs, makeup, diamond jewelry, driving directions to Burlington, her favorite stuffed animal, and the book Not Without Peril, about mountain climbing in the White Mountains. Her debit card, credit cards, and cell phone were missing, with no trace of their use or location since her disappearance. Between 8 and 8.30 p.m., a contractor returning home claimed to have seen an individual resembling Mora walking swiftly along Route 112, about four to five miles east of where her car was discovered. The person was wearing jeans, a dark coat, and a light-colored hood. However, he didn't report this sighting immediately, realizing the connection to Mora's case only months later. Emergency medical services and a fire truck arrived between 8 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. By 8.49 p.m., her car was towed, and the responding officer left around 9.30 p.m. Later, a rag from Mora's emergency kit was found stuffed into the car's muffler pipe. Mora Murray was officially declared missing around 12 p.m. the next day, almost 24 hours after her last confirmed sighting, launching a perplexing search for the young woman, continuing to mystify investigators and the public for years. Following the discovery, law enforcement launched an extensive search, spanning a wide area to find Mora and gather leads about her whereabouts. Local authorities, state police, and federal agencies, including the FBI, concentrated their efforts on the rugged, remote terrain near the crash site, hoping for any clues shedding light on her disappearance. Despite their determined search, no conclusive evidence emerged, leaving both her family and the community in persistent uncertainty. In the years that followed, various theories surfaced, 
reflecting the enduring fascination with Mora's case. Speculations ranged from foul play to voluntary disappearance or a staged accident, evolving the narrative and perpetuating the enduring mystery that defined her legacy. The mysterious disappearance of Maura Murray remains unsolved to this day, leaving investigators and the public baffled. Despite extensive searches and investigations, no concrete evidence has surfaced to shed light on her fate. The case continues to captivate the attention of true crime enthusiasts and remains an enduring mystery in the realm of unsolved disappearance. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, stay cautious and remain vigilant.